Hello and welcome to Flower of Light Mystery School podcast and as usual I'm here with Charlotte. Hello. And Christine. Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the forest be witch. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> so um, so again we're broadcasting, podcasting, broadcasting from, mm-hmm. the, from the Boyan Valley mm-hmm. yes. and um, what we're going to talk about today is again the connection, well not again I suppose, but the connection between Egypt and Ireland. So, um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was something that I suppose every Irish person, you know, learns about in school, but not in the sense of how we want to talk about it today. So, Mm -hmm. and that is the Battle of the Boyne. So, you know, the Battle of the Boyne for Irish and, and really in the larger scope I'd say for even Europe and even the world in in a sense of um, the effect of the aftermath if you like of the Battle of the Boyne and how it affected um, the global uh, status quo Mm -hmm. Um, but it's also for Irish people the Battle of the Boyne is what caused the division if you like between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland or Mm -hmm. between what we'd call Protestants and Catholics Mm-hmm. Um, and th- that's actually another similarity if you think about it between Egypt and Ireland Egypt was always divided into Upper Egypt hmm. and Lower Egypt yeah. until King Menes who was is supposed to be the first human king mm-hmm. remember we said there was um, the Neeter mm-hmm. and then there was the Shemshu Hor yeah. and then there was the mortals or the humans mm-hmm. in Egypt so King Menes was the first human king so they say and he was the one who united Upper and Lower Egypt. So before that, you had Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. And so if you look at Ireland, it's divided in the same way. You have Upper Ireland and Lower Ireland, or Northern Ireland and the mm-hmm. Republic. Yeah. And if you look at Ireland, you know, the physical landmass of Ireland. Yeah. It kind of looks like, a lot of people say, it looks like like maybe a baby. You know? Yeah, baby. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you turn it kind of sideways, it can look like... Maybe a little dog. Mm-hmm. Some people say a pig. I don't see a pig. I always think a bird, but it's not a bird. It doesn't um, look like a bird. People see different things in it. You know? I don't know. Um, I see kind of a little shaggy dog. <laughs> you know, like with little paws out. Like yeah. <laughs> um, but no matter what you see it as, if you look at where Ireland is divided across Northern Ireland, mm. no matter you see it as a baby or a little dog or a little pig or even a bird, <laughs> the division goes right across the head. It cuts the head off. Yes, you're right. It cuts Ooh. the head off. Okay. So yeah, yeah, so this division of Ireland literally chopped the head off. If you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, very much like you know, the pyramid on the dollar bill. Yes. Yes. The way the capstone is removed. Mm. It's the same thing. Yeah. Because Ireland was an extremely is an extremely powerful place mm-hmm. in terms of our ancient history. Mm-hmm. You know, more powerful than Irish people themselves know, no, yeah. or that than kind of the wider mass of people might know. And it, it, going back to, of course, a lot of things in the further past, but in more modern times, we'd say um, the Battle of the Point. Mm-hmm. So, um, the Battle of the Point is a kind of a strange event, if you like, because it was a battle <laughs> for... Oh, Charlotte's smiling at me here, I'm just oh, wondering gosh. what you're smiling at. I've heard people say it wasn't really a battle. No, though, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah, it wasn't a battle. Um, in fact, there was somebody who um, did, uh, what would you say, kind of um, went to the area where the battle was supposed to have been fought. Yeah. And did, what's, you know, when... It would be a battlefield, a, a battlefield archaeologist who yeah. specializes yeah. in excavating. And excavate, that's yeah. the word I was trying to think of. So he went and excavated along mm-hmm. the area of the Boyne where this battle was supposed to have been fought. And he was basically, um, was known to have, have said, if there was a battle fought here, they must have thrown stones at each other. Because there's no no yeah. evidence of it. or anything yeah, ever okay. found. So, um, what I'm actually talking about here is um, this was uh, what what I'm about to talk about in this podcast. Should I say is um, mostly comes from a book by a man called Andy Power, and the book's called Ireland Land of the Pharaohs, and um, an amazing book full of a lot of information that. Um, some people may know, a lot of people I wouldn't say don't know at all, mm-hmm. um, and it really is about our, 
the Irish, you know, and their suppressed history, and really the history of the world, and how we are, well, it, I mean, the hint is in the title, mm -hmm. Ireland, Land of the Pharaohs, mm -hmm. you know. So what this whole book really talks about is how um, Ireland and Egypt are connected, mm -hmm. and how they're connected through rituals, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, not connected through rituals, but how um, this ritual shows the connection. Mm -hmm. But it was taught, of course, to Irish people as something totally different. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a few things in this book. It's 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 um it's not the easiest book in the world to read, no. and there's a lot of information in it. And I say that in a good way. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's it's there's a lot of information. That's why it's not the easiest book to yeah. read because there's so much information. You have to go back and read it a few times, if you know, to kind of get everything out. Yeah, to really understand it. So I'm I'm kind of just gonna cut through a few of the points, if you like. Mm -hmm. So the main theme of the book anyway is about the Battle of the Boyne and it's about how that battle was fought by, uh, or rather that supposed battle was fought by mm -hmm. um, William of Orange yeah. and James Stewart. Mm. Now, the effect of what we've, you know, we consider the Battle of the Boyne is the division of Ireland and the creation, if you like, of Protestant and Catholic which mm -hmm. we all know caused a lot of I don't want to get yeah, political good stuff. <laughs> I'm not getting political because I'm not political but yeah. that's the effect of of what S happened. Yeah, you know? separation and division within a family. Yeah, but and this is the interesting thing and this is the kind of thing that you have to read the book a couple of times before you even get it. Mm -hmm. Um the event known as the Battle of the Boyne was not meant to create what actually happened. Okay. That's not, that was not the focus of its... The intention? No, it wasn't the intention. So what actually happened at the Battle of the Boyne um, was a ritual mm -hmm. that was meant to um, encode information mm -hmm. onto the land oh, okay. about the history of the Irish people. So what it actually was, was it's known as a Horus ritual. That's what I was looking for, the question of Horus ritual. Yeah, a Horus ritual. And mm -hmm. a Horus ritual obviously comes from Egypt. Mm -hmm. you know? So. Um, and just for the people who don't understand, Horus is the sun they're talking about. Yeah, right? the sun. Yeah, S-U-N. So. Mm -hmm. so Horus in Egypt would have been the sun, but he's also, Horus would have represented the sun, you know, S-U-N. But he's also the son, S-O-N, of Osiris. Right. And the idea of Osiris and Horus is, I can just put it this way, the king is dead, long live the king. Yeah. So Horus and Osiris are really the same people. Mm -hmm. so Osiris is the father and Horus is the son. Mm -hmm. But when Osiris dies, Horus becomes the, the king, king yeah. if you like. Yeah. So he becomes Osiris. Right. And his son okay. becomes Horus. So it's a title. It's a title, shifting. Yeah. title. exactly. It's, it's a title. Right. It's a title. Yeah. And even still, we're talking about king. We're not talking about a king as we think of, you know, a royal sitting on a throne no. ruling the people. The word king actually comes from the word kin. kin. Take G off the end. Yeah. And it comes from kin. So your kin is your mother, your brother, your sister, yeah. your father, your and mm -hmm. and the kin in a shamanic sense yeah. would be the wisest person in the family. Yes. That would be the person, that would be the kind of um, head of the tribe, if you like. Mm. Or the head shaman. And they're the head of shaman because they're the wisest. Mm -hmm. Not because they have any control over people. No. Because everybody has agreed that they're the wisest person in the whole group. Mm -hmm. to lead them. I mean? How to would you say that in Irish? The title of the wisest person was called the... An olum. The olum. Yeah, olum. Okay. An olum was an arch druid. Mm. And the word Olam actually is where Olympic comes from. Yes. Mm. So Olympic and Olam are Irish. Mm. The Olympic Games, as as I discussed before, comes from Ireland. Anyway, that's a whole different. That's thing. a whole other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so to set the scene, what we're saying is that um, the Battle of the Boyne was fought mm -hmm. in the area of where um, slain the Boyne Valley. The Boyne Valley. Slain, Newgrange, Nolte, Dove. Yeah. Those structures are in that area where the Battle of the Boyne was fought. Yeah. Now, it was fought by William of Orange and James Stuart. And mm -hmm. they were fighting for the throne of England. Mm -hmm. 
England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales. Mm-hmm. So why did they come to Ireland to do it? <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, why did they come to Ireland to fight that battle? You know? Yeah. Um, so another thing that people probably wouldn't know and that Irish people certainly wouldn't be taught probably in school is that um, William of Orange and James Stuart were related to each other. That's right. Oh. So William of Orange was married to the daughter of James Stuart. Oh. So James Stuart was, in fact, William of Orange's father-in-law. Mm. You see? Mm. So it comes, becomes different now, doesn't it? Yeah. Instead of thinking of James Stuart and William of Orange being, having this mad battle and... Like adversarial. Hating each other. Yeah. They were literally in the same family. family. Yeah. They were the same family. Cain and Abel. So, That's it. In, in Egypt, anyway, in ancient Egypt, there was, um, as we mentioned, the ritual called the uh, Horus ritual. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to what we spoke about in one of the podcasts just recently about the story of Osiris mm-hmm. and how Osiris was put in the um, chest. Do you remember we spoke about that? Yes. It's about the mythology of um, Osiris and Seth and Isis and Nephthys. So yeah. it's how Osiris was tricked into getting into um, a box, mm-hmm. we'll say. And he was tricked by his brother Seth. And as soon as he got into the box, the box was nailed shut and it was sealed with lead and... Mm-hmm. We discussed that before. Pushed into the river? Yeah. So, um, as we mentioned, Horus is Osiris' son. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, and so, Horus, f- when he grew up, fought a battle. Yeah. And that battle is talked about in um, Edfu Temple. That's what, it's part of what's written on the walls in Edfu Temple. Um. And that battle talks about how Horus fought for the kind of, um, to defend his father, (laughs) let's say. Because, remember, um, Set killed his father. He Mm -hmm. put him into a box. The box was thrown into the Nile. Do you remember Isis and Nephthys had to go along and try and find the pieces? Yeah. We we talked about this in a a different podcast. To remember him. To remember him. So, um, Horus, when he grows up, tries to avenge his father by fighting Set. Mm-hmm. And this battle, they say, took place at Edfu. And Set, oh sorry, Horus fights Set. And in the process of fighting Set, he loses an eye and damages his testicles. So, l- loses one of his testicles, apparently. Mm-hmm. So, um, the ritual of... And that was Horus, was it? Yeah, Horus fighting. He was uh, trying to avenge his father because... Yeah. Um, his father was killed by yeah. Seth. Seth. Yeah. But don't forget, these. This is not meant. To, you're not meant to Literal. think of Horus as a person and Osiris as a person and Seth as a person. These are all mythological stories mm-hmm. and parables. Yes. So. So the idea of so it was encoding other information. Of, yeah. If you think of, um, Horus fighting his uncle. Mm-hmm. Now think of William of Orange fighting his father and all. Exactly. Oh, like the ritual. Thing. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're reenacting it, and then they're basically the reenactment recharges the energy. Mm. So if you think of William of Orange, Orange, what color would that be? That'd be the sun, wouldn't it? Yes. Mm. So William of Orange would have represented the sun. Mm. Mm. Oh, sun, you see. Yeah, you Horus go. was the sun. Yeah. You know. The S U N and the S O N. James Stewart would have represented Osiris in in the Battle of the Boyne. Yeah. So why would James Stewart represent Osiris? Because James Stewart was. At the moment, he had the power. Yeah. He was still king, and he was handing the power over to William of Orange. Yeah. And William of Orange, the true descent of power from James Stuart was to his daughter, Mary yeah, Stuart. Mary, Mary Stuart. Oh. She was the true ruler, next mm-hmm. ruler. Yes, yes. William of Orange was married to her. Yes. But Mary Stuart did not want to rule with her husband as as um kind of lower than her yeah yeah she wanted him to co-reign to rule equally with her 50 50 yeah william of orange yeah. so mary stewart who was the daughter of james stewart yeah rightfully was was the heir to yeah. the throne but she was married to william of orange who was less william of orange could not become king because no. he was not of the house of stewart 
He yes. was not of the bloodline. But he could be through marriage. He was through marriage, but he still couldn't be a proper divine king. Yeah. So he had to go through the whole horse, horse, horse. And because ritual. Mary Stuart did not want for her to be queen and him to be kind of yeah, like in the background like Prince Philip, you yes. know, the queen's husband today. Just a consort, not having yeah. any power. She wanted him to be the real king and rule 50-50 equal. Mm. So very much like Akhenaten and Nefertiti. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because they are of the lineage of them. Really? The Stuart family can be traced all the way back to the Knights Templar and oh. to ancient Egypt and wow. to, yeah, and, to cool. and through the family of Akhenaten. So what was happening at the so-called Battle of the Boyne was actually a ritual mm -hmm. for a few different reasons. One, so that William of Orange mm -hmm. could rule um, by divine right mm -hmm. um, along with his wife, Mary Stuart, mm -hmm. who was the daughter of James Stuart. Mm -hmm. James was the present king, but the power was been handed to his daughter. But he wanted his son-in-law to, to be a divine king, mm -hmm. properly, not just in blood, but also in Fact. the ancient ritual as well. Because these are the descendants of the mystery school. James Stewart yeah. and Mary Stewart, they're the descendants of the Mystery School or the ancient Atlanteans that would have left Ireland, yeah. went into Egypt and then came back into Ireland again. Yeah. They were the descendants of that family. So, um, mm -hmm. so the so-called battle was actually a handing over of power by James Stewart to William of Orange. Mm -hmm. You see? Not a battle at all. No. Not a battle at all. So there was that. It was the handing over of power. And it was also the encoding of the information on the land. Mm -hmm. Right? So of all the places in, in you know, they could have chosen to do this apparent battle, mm -hmm. they chose the area where Newgrange, Noth, Doth, and um Slain. The yeah. area of Slain is. Now, the thing about <coughs> the Boyan River, mm -hmm. if you take the Boyan River and you take the river Nile, mm -hmm. and you map those two rivers over each other, mm -hmm. they're identical. There's an area in the Boyne called the Bend in the Boyne, and that's where Newgrange, North and Dove is, yeah. and where Slane is just above that, and Drogheda just below it, mm -hmm. and that's the whole area that this battle was fought in. Mm -hmm. Now if you overlay the same area of the Nile, mm -hmm. because the Nile has a bend in it as well, right, yeah. the bend in the Nile, and right at the bend in the Nile, where Slane would be in Ireland, along yeah. the Nile, is the area where Akhetaten, or Tel Armana, the city mm. of Akhenaten, would be. Mm. Behind the bend in the Boyne, where, for example, Drod it would be, is where Luxor is. There you go. Where my centre is in Egypt. Yes. And right at the bend in the Boyne, Bruna Boyne, mm -hmm. is... Um, Newgrange, Noth, and Doth. Those um, three sites. Yeah. yeah. So, the Boyan, in terms of the sites I've just mentioned, uh -huh. and the River Nile, map each other exactly. So, Slain is in the area where Tal Armana, which was mm -hmm. Akhenaten City. Yeah. Luxor is in the area where Drogheda would have been. And where the actual bend is, is the three sites of Newgrange, Noth, and Doth. Wow. So, now the interesting thing is, if you overlay a map of the Milky Way, the Dark Rift and the Milky Way, over both the Boyne and the Nile, they map exactly. Do you mean like they the look... The Dark Rift and the Milky Way. It's the same area. shape as like... Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So you, as a river? If you put them over, superimpose yeah. them over, there's a bend they, they in align the up. area so they match. Wow. Exactly. So you can see that this was more than just mm -hmm. a handing over of power. No. It was also to do with the stars and the constellations in the sky. Mm -hmm. So, because it was a ritual, and because it was a solar ritual, it was to do with the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the configuration of constellations in the sky on the morning of when that battle actually happened mm -hmm. was very important. Why? Because. Do you remember I told you William, William of Orange? He represented the sun. Mm -hmm. So what actually happened was, on the morning of the battle, they, uh, William aligned 
along the Boyne and began to move across into the Boyne River, okay? Mm -hmm. At exactly the same time as the sun <laughs> began to move across in through the dark rift of the Milky Way. Wow. So literally what we're saying is you can track the movement of James Stewart and William of Orange as they crossed the Boyne, the time of the morning they did it, mm -hmm. the time they were at the edge of the Boyne was when the sun was rising, the time when he was in the middle of the Boyne was when the sun itself was in the middle of the dark route of the Milky Way, mm -hmm. and when he got to the other side was when the sun had moved across the other side. Mm -hmm. So what they were actually doing, James and William on the ground on that morning, what they were actually doing was matching exactly what the sun, the moon, and the stars and the constellations were doing in the sky. Wow. You see? Wow, okay. Mirroring, mirroring it, like yeah. you're saying. Yeah, so yeah. they were acting as the planets. Yeah. And the sun, you know? And the river Boyne, as I said, acted as the, as the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the interesting things is about dult. Mm -hmm. We pronounce it dult, okay? But in Gaelic, that was pronounced duat. Mm -hmm. One of the things about the Horus ritual is that they were crossing the Celestial River mm. it's because the Nile is in Egypt the counterpart of the dark rift in the Milky Way on the ground. Yeah. So what they're doing is they're crossing the river to the west bank of the Nile mm -hmm. where the sun sets, remember? Yeah. And that's the area known as the Duat. In Ireland, Doth would be known as the Duat. Mm -hmm. So they were crossing the Boyne to the Duat. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the ascension initiations that took place to do with Osiris and Horus is that the sun, now remember this is all mythological and parable. Yeah. And it's one of the initiations that took place in, in the King's, in the Great Pyramid of the King's Chamber, one the final initiation, mm -hmm. where um, the sun ascended to the stars, uh, sorry, the father ascended to the stars. So Osiris, in other words. Every king was Osiris. Okay. Um, so the initi initiations that were taking place, remember we talked about initiations that were taking place mm -hmm. in the Great Pyramid. Now when we say king again, it's not meant to mean as we think of as king. Yeah. Kin is anybody in the, in the mystery in the, schools. In, in the bloodline and yeah. in the mystery schools. In the mystery schools. And no, I mean not necessarily in the bloodline. That's what one of the things Akhenaten was doing. Akhenaten was opening up. It had been that way. Because the Amun priesthood you know, started the whole thing about keeping everything secret. And what I, one of the things that happened and Nefertiti were doing was opening up the mystery schools and the information for everybody, mm. not just for the elite few. Good. You know, because in, in its original form, it was for everybody. But then the M1 priesthood started making mm. it secret and everything. So when well, and also along, they stopped following the universal order and stayed in Luxor, yeah. right? Rather than following the cosmic well, that's a good constellations, point what you're there, actually, because because that's following Matt's the universal universe. order and, and the cosmic order was literally what you just said. Was saying mm -hmm. was about mapping what was going on in the sky, mm -hmm. mirroring it on the mirroring earth, mirroring on the earth, and so that's what was happening at the point. Mm -hmm. They were literally they were enacting the same bringing language. back yeah. the order of Matt. Yes, wow. because in ancient Egypt, to become a pharaoh, you had to take an oath to uphold the order of Matt. And remember, we said Matt is truth, balance justice mm -hmm. and order in the universe and she matt is um considered a goddess and represented with a feather in her hair and she's also represented with um wings mm -hmm. and she is the archetypal angel she's where the angel the idea of the angel comes from mm. that's where we get an angel with wings is yeah. from matt and isis in ancient egypt yeah because isis turned into a bird to save her husband that's right mm -hmm. so a swallow. Um, yeah, so the Battle of the Boyne was exactly doing that. It was mirroring, James and William were mirroring the movement of the this, the this stars, the planets, yeah, and so the forth celestial in, in order. the sky. Wow. Okay, so we're back and we just had a bit of a technical difficulty there. Um, We had the microphone facing away from me instead of towards me, so the first <laughs> half of this probably sounds a bit echoey. But hopefully you can hear, um, I'm, I'm a little bit clearer now. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, so I was just saying about how um, James and William um, on the morning of the so-called Battle of the Boyan were actually reenacting the movement of the sun across the dark rift of the Milky Way and how the River Boyan itself and the River Nile, Nile both um, 
mirror each other and also how they mirror the dark rift in the Milky Way. So um, one of the ancient things, as I mentioned in Egypt, was the order of Matt, which means keeping the cosmic balance and the cosmic order, and that is mirroring what's um, taking place in the, in the skies. Mm. So, um, and as we said as well, it was also the handing over of of the divine right of kinship um, from William, or sorry, from James to his son-in-law, um, William of Orange. So there's encoded in the story or in the battle itself, or the ritual battle itself, is um, a lot of the information as to how this was a ritual. So, for example, um, the guy, Andy Power, that I mentioned at the top of the podcast, who wrote this book, Ireland, Land of the Pharaohs, um, ran um, a sky program that can um, I know there's one I think it's Sky Globe or so, I don't know there's a couple of programs anyway that you can run the sky map backwards you know to any point in time mm. and you can find out um, where for example the sun the moon the planets and what constellations were in the sky cool. oh, at, right. any, at any given time Astrology. <laughs> so um, this guy got this um, computer program Mm-hmm. Andy Power, he 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 got uh he actually went to some place in Belfast, and then, um that's how he first verified it, and then he got the the computer program and ran this computer program, rewound the sky back to the time of the Battle of the Boyne. Wow! And saw what was what constellations and what was so he was able to verify, step by step, that William of Orange was on the banks of the Boyne at the exact time. On that morning that the sun was rising. William of Orange moved into the middle of the Boyne at the exact time as the sun moved into the middle of the dark rift of the Milky Way. Mm. James Stewart was on the other side of the Boyne. You know, so um, where the duet would would have been. So as I was saying, um, the... one of the final initiations in the Great Pyramid was the ascension of the king or the kin to the stars Mm -hmm. and that happened in the Great Pyramid and so Osiris is always considered the king or the kin you know Mm -hmm. so Osiris is the father and Horus is the son yeah so what I'm saying is Osiris represents father Horus represents son Mm -hmm. not a particular father or a particular son ritual father and son that's what Osiris and Horus represent like a universal representative a universal an archetypal father and son that's it Mm -hmm. so um, the idea was that when the father died Mm-hmm. You know, when the father did this final initiation of going through the process we call death, mm-hmm. that the son had to go to the duat with him. So the son had to make the journey with him. Mm. Now, the idea of crossing the Nile is, st- or sorry, crossing the river is still in our consciousness today because we, um, you know, one of the kind of more modern expressions is paying the ferryman. Sorry. Yes, right. So in the Greek. And that's talking about when somebody dies. River sticks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Paying the ferryman. And that's about carrying the soul across the river. Now, in India, the Hindus mm-hmm. all f- float their, their dead in cr- cremation on the river. Yeah, yeah, in the Ganges. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's the same thing. So the, the Osiris ritual, if you like to say, was about um, when the father mm-hmm. died, his um, consciousness mm-hmm. ascended. And the son had to make that journey to the Jewat. With the father. But the son was going to take the information and bring it back. Mm-hmm. Whereas the father was staying there. Do mm. you know what I mean? And moving on. Right? Now when you think about it, they weren't actually two separate people. Osiris and Horus are the same people. Mm-hmm. It's like you giving birth to yourself on a new level. Oh, okay. Right. You see? Mm. So um, it's like you're a daughter now, but one day you'll be a mother. That's right. mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're both the same. Yeah. So Osiris and Horus were it's the just same. A different stage of your life, you know. And title. Oh, okay. It's sense. like a father having a son, and then the son grows up and becomes a father. Right. There you go. Do you know what I mean? It's that cycle that we're talking about. Yeah. So, um, so this was a huge thing that was um, evidence mm-hmm. of how the people in Ireland were the people who actually brought all this information into a- ancient Egypt. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't mean the people at the Battle of the Boyne, but they still knew that. So the families of the Stuarts, they go back and William of Orange in, in a different route, if you know what I mean. But both of those families or houses, if you like, connect back to ancient Egypt. Yeah. 
connect to the Knights Templar. Mm -hmm. But they also connect back into ancient Ireland Mm -hmm. because um, at the, the, okay, so this is bringing me to another part of the connection between ancient Ireland and Egypt and what Andy Power writes in his book. So another thing he writes about is at this time, now not the time of the Battle of the Boyne, but the time going way back before even ancient Egypt, Mm -hmm. at the time that um, Plato referred to as Atlantis. Mm -hmm. At that time, Ireland, England, um, parts of the Scandinavian countries and parts of Europe were all connected into one landmass. It was known by different names. Hybrazel, Tirnanog, Atlantis. I think Doggerland too, Doggerland. Yeah. So Atlantis was what Plato called it. And it had 10 provinces, 10 provinces and 10, well, they say princes, you know, 10 princes who um, guided or over the seven provinces mm-hmm. or sorry 10 provinces um and then all those land masses broke up mm-hmm. but before this happened um there is the uh idea or theory that's put forth that the people of atlantis and the people of in ireland at this time were existing in what was known as and not just in ireland but i mean the world itself the earth all mm-hmm. the people all the consciousness were existing in a consciousness very different to what we exist in now. Mm-hmm. They existed in a consciousness, and I spoke about this before, called the bicameral mind. Mm. The bicameral mind, by bi means two. So bicameral means two-chambered. Two-chambered mind. Mm. So your two chambers are your right hemisphere and your left hemisphere. Mm. Okay? That's your male and female. Yes. So in the idea of the bicameral mind, the right mind, or the right brain, or the right chamber, mm-hmm. was considered the God part. And the left chamber, or the left part, was considered the man part. Mm. And the whole concept is that God was with man, hand in hand, Mm -hmm. perfect, and was able to communicate. In other words, um, the people inhabiting the earth at that time were existing in a consciousness um, whereby they had direct communication with the God part of themselves. Mm -hmm. There was no what we would call personality or ego. Mm -hmm. So to put it this way, it's like, I think we talked about this before, but it's like um, when you're learning how to drive, everything is a struggle. You have to remember to look in the mirror, put on the indicator, take off your handbrake, put on the, put your foot on the clutch. There's loads of things to remember because your ego, your personality, your logical mind is is trying to remember all these steps bit by bit by bit. Mm -hmm. But when it becomes learned behavior and it goes into your subconscious, and you're able to do it, like breathing, you know. You can get into the car. Without thinking you can it. without thinking about it. You can get into the car. You can drive, and you can even drive for miles without realizing and saying to yourself, "Oh my God, how did I get here?" Mm. Might have been driving. Didn't even realize I was driving. So when something becomes learned behavior, it becomes automatic. You do it without thinking about it, mm-hmm. and that's the closest way to describe the bicameral mind. They were able to do things without having to logically think about them. There was no ego in the way. There was no you or me. Everybody taught in a holistic way. Mm, The bicameral mind was connected to all of nature. Mm. And it was able to operate on, do you remember we talk about the morphic fields? Mm -hmm. It was able to instantaneously communicate. Mm. So telepathic. Yeah, telepathic. And the bicameral mind was um, a genius mind. It had perfect balance between the male and the female, between the God part and the man part. Mm. So they acted on intuition. And all these structures around the ancient world were built in, when people were in, in that consciousness. Mm. Now, the mythologies around the world talk about a cataclysm ending that phase. All right. So the land masses broke apart and mm-hmm. those people had to go in search of a new center of the earth because all the land masses broke apart. Yeah. Um, now, in, in, in this book, Land of the Pharaohs, um, what he says is that a comet hit the earth back at that time and what happened was the earth was surrounded by uh, a water membrane Mm -hmm. it was also upright on its own axis and when the comet hit the earth the the membrane the water membrane was tore apart Mm. and the water came from above now it does say that in in the book of genesis in the bible it says you know when um, noah's flood Mm -hmm. it says the waters from above came down but one of the interesting things is um uh, scientists have asked how could the earth be covered in water there's only a finite amount of water on the earth 
there's the same amount of water now as there's always been. It's a closed system. It rises and falls. Mm. So there couldn't... Where did all this excess water come from? But this theory explains it. The earth was surrounded by a water membrane. And when this comet came in, it broke that membrane and the waters came down. But it also knocked the earth off. It's axis. It's mm. axis. So it knocked the earth from its upright axis to a tilted axis. And that's what happened when Atlantis sunk mm. and why all these continents broke apart and everything else. But it's also um, put forth as the theory as to how our consciousness um, literally went into shock. We were, we were literally in shock, post-traumatic shock. Yeah. When Comet hit the Earth, our, everything was torn apart. The Earth was torn apart. Mm-hmm. All of the continents and the, the land masses moved. Uh, land masses sank. Water rose where there shouldn't be. People had to f- hide. A lot of people died, you know. Mm-hmm. So people in general... All the people that existed at that time were sent into a shockwave. Mm. And their consciousness was completely connected to the energy field of the Earth. So when the Earth was knocked off balance, mm. its water membrane destroyed. Um, and it didn't just do that to the wider solar system. The solar system was much more compact and close to Earth at the time. You know, mm-hmm. the planets, everything was closer around, if you like. Mm. And so that the planets could be seen much more clearly. In, in note, there's um, a map of the face of the moon, an accurate map of the face of the moon. Mm. Without telescope? How did they do that? Because they could see it with the naked eye very clearly. The planets were much bigger and much closer. Mm. Not that they were bigger, but they, were, they looked bigger because they were closer. Yeah. yeah, the illusion. So this comet caused all this destruction. And this is talked about in all the ancient books. about um, If you look at the asteroid belt, mm-hmm. the asteroid belt is where a planet should be. There should be a planet there. Mm. You know where the asteroid belt is? Yeah. So the asteroid belt is actually the remnants of a planet that was destroyed by that incoming comet. Whereabouts is that? It's between um, Venus and... No, hold on a minute. Mercury, Venus, Mars. Earth, Mars. It's after Mars, isn't after it? Mars. After Mother Mars. Very eager male after Mars, yeah. <laughs> between Mars and Jupiter, is it? <laughs> um, it's, it was known in the ancient world as the hammered bracelet. Mm. Or the ring past knot, it's also called. Mm. Because you can't go outside of it. Yeah. That's why we never went to the moon. <laughs> yeah. Because you can't get out of that. Um, anyway. What do you mean? So you can't pass through it. It's a, it's a ring. It's a whole circle in the solar system of um, stones. And, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Well, you wouldn't need to go through that to go to the moon, but you'd need to go through the radiation belt. Yes. The which is, um, you know, you wouldn't get through that. No. Even anyway in the first place. But um, so... What was I saying? Um, oh, yeah, right. so all the planets were closer. Yeah. And and the people themselves apparently were a lot taller. So between 15 and 16 feet tall. Ooh. Which would go, you know, which would kind of go hand in hand with, say, when you look at ancient Egypt and, and the huge oh. statues and things yeah. like that that are yeah, there. Yeah, the kind of and the huge structures. The pharaohs and the royal yeah. family are so much taller than everyone else. So their level of consciousness went um, along with the height. Mm. We are smaller and we live shorter amount of years because our consciousness is... Lower. Totally lower than mm. it then. Um, so when we were in the bicameral mind at this time before all this destruction happened, mm. um, we were physically taller, um, physically bigger, obviously, and had access to our both right and left hemispheres in perfect balance, mm. which brings you in to genius. If you remember, we talked about the white powder gold that they were That's making yeah. to eat to try and bring themselves back into that balance. Mm-hmm. So anyway. The story is that um, when all these land masses broke apart, um, the people knew. They knew these were master astronomers, mm-hmm. these people. So they knew there was an incoming comet. They knew it was going to happen. They knew for a long time before yeah. that it was going to happen. So they prepared for it. And they built 10 arcs all around in each province. There you go. 10 arcs. Um, and those arcs were to preserve humanity after the cataclysm. To pr- preserve the knowledge, the information, and everything else. So, um, one of the arcs is Newgrange. Yeah. So Newgrange is known in in um, in Irish as the Cave of the Sun. Ooh. That's what it's known as. Not Newgrange. Newgrange isn't is a a modern name for it. It was known as Cave of the Sun. Yeah. And um, its construction, as it, we see it today, is very modern. That was done in the seventies. You know, the way Newgrange yes, is constru- yes, so, yeah. all the white stone around the front. The white stone was there, but yeah. 
It wasn't just around the front of it but the way added, they have it now. They added to it, yeah. it, it the, well, the white quartz stone was there. It was fallen, slipped all out. To the, yeah. But they put it just around the front. Yeah. Like the whole thing should have been covered in white stone. Yeah. Um, it's like, think of the pyramids it's covered easy. in white limestone. It's a pyramid except for it's the dome. It, it, yeah, exactly. Its its original structure was pyramid shape. Um, and outside it were three pyramid stones. Ooh. They've removed them. They're gone. But there used to be three stone, three pyramids outside New Grange, mm. which gives you a strong indication of where the people went. Mm-hmm. Okay. So another thing when you go to New Grange, the guides will always tell you, oh, it's totally watertight since the very day it was constructed. It is totally watertight because that's what it was built for. Yeah. You know, because don't forget Noah's flood. Knew. Remember Noah's yeah. flood? Yeah. Yeah. So Noah's Flood is talked about in our ancient Irish mythology and it talks about how the granddaughter of Noah came to Ireland. Anyway, that's another whole story. But um, so the arcs, you know, that were built around. Um, so another thing uh, is that, say, for example, you know, the way we say um, Noah's Ark rested. We think of Noah's Ark as a boat. Yeah. Yeah. So his Ark rested on Mount Ararat. Yes, yeah? Mount Ararat. If you spell Ararat backwards, <laughs> what you get is Tarara. 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 And Tarara means, um, tar means the house or mansion. So it means the house or mansion of the sun. <laughs> and the whole area of Newgrange, Note, Dote and t- the hill of Tara, that whole area would have been known as Tara. Not just the hill of Tara. Yeah. The whole area. So now what you have is James Stewart, William of Orange fighting this so-called mm-hmm. battle, which wasn't a battle, on a river which mirrors the Nile mm-hmm. and, and the which Bay. also mirrors the dark rift in the Milky Way. Yep. And they're mirroring the movements of the sun yeah. in the sky. But also present in the sky on the morning of the so-called Battle of the Boyne mm-hmm. was um, Leo, the constellation of Leo, the constellation of Cancer, the constellation of uh, Macernos, which uh, is represented by a unicorn, Ooh. and um, Mars, the planet Mars. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing is, I'm not going to get into the whole details about it because, um, but if you look at the English coat of arms, mm-hmm. the royal family, you know, the English coat of arms, if you look at that, it has all those symbols in it. Yes, you're right. So, unicorn, the ritual the of the Battle of the Boyne and the sky, in other words, if you took a picture of the sky on that morning of the Battle of the Boyne, it's immortalized in the English coat of arms. In the her- in the you have the lion, you have the unicorn, you know, you have. Yeah. So it's actually a picture of the sky on the morning. Why? Why was that morning so important to the English royal? Huh. You see, because the Windsors and the English are usurpers to the throne. They're not the, the real people that should yeah. be there. Um, and the stone, you know, the, the stone that's under the throne in Westminster Abbey. That's yeah. the stone of destiny. That's the stone that was taken. Ireland is known as Inish Fall. The island of destiny. Why? Because the Leofall was brought here. The stone of destiny. The stone of destiny is the stone that Jacob laid his head on and had a dream about the angel coming up and down. Yeah, coming up the ladder. And then the angel brought him to God and introduced, if you like, um, Jacob to God. And Jacob had a conversation. They say he wrestled with God. And when he came back down, God said, you will no longer be known as Jacob. You will now be known as Israel. So that's where Israel comes from. Israel is not the name of a country. Mm-hmm. It's the name of Jacob. His name was changed to Israel. That's right. Jacob is the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Anyway, this is getting a bit... It's going back to how the Irish actually were the Israelites. Mm-hmm. So the Irish were the Atlanteans. So Ireland... Plato called it, right? Yeah. Ireland, England and the Scandinavian countries and Europe and all those countries broke apart when this comet hit. Now, all the sites like Newgrange and... Um, they all have different functions, but one of the functions were as astronomical observatories because mm-hmm. they knew that this was going to happen. They knew this comet was going to come in and cause this destruction. Who, they, I mean, they, the, the um, people of Atlantis, Ireland at the time, mm-hmm. they knew this was going to happen. And when I say Ireland, I, OK, maybe I'm being, but I mean England as well. Ireland, England, yeah, Scotland, like Wales, we were all one Denmark. people. Mm-hmm. We were all one people. Yeah, even Scandinavian countries mm-hmm. in Northern Europe, we were all yes, one people. Yeah. Um, that's Atlantis. That's the Atlanteans. I'm saying Irish, okay, but maybe English people wouldn't refer themselves as that. But I mean, I'm, I'm when I say Irish, I'm taking in all those people. Yeah. Um, and Tara would have been the centre of it. So, um, Newgrange would have been considered as Noah's Ark at Mount Ararat. Yeah. 
Yes. Tara Ra. Except these people were geniuses, don't forget. That's right. So the animals going in two by two were not animals going in to the earth. This was like a seed bank. You know? Yeah. So yeah. New it's Grange. DNA going in two by two. Exactly. It was like, I mean, they have one today. They have a yeah. few of them today. In Norway. Uh, DNA banks, where they keep account of everybody's DNA and they store it in a big oh. warehouse. In case so that every, in case there's a cataclysm, so they can restart civilization again. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, all, all seeds. seeds. All seeds, all uh, the, the the DNA of everything is stored in a seed. It's called a seed bank. I think it's in Alaska or somewhere. Yeah. Uh, there's a few of them, and they store the DNA of everything. Wow. In case anything happens, so they can. It's like Jurassic Park. Yeah, I was it's just thinking exactly like Jurassic yeah. Park. So, that's what Newgrange was. Was mm. one of those arcs. Yeah. Where, the DNA of everything, was yeah. stored so that. Humanity could be restarted again. Did people take shelter in these? Would you think? Or yeah, that's that's like something that you think about. But if they did, like, say, a cataclysm came in and there was a nuclear winter because the sun was blocked out and everything else, yeah. um, how would they eat if they were? Yeah, like, did they need to eat though? That's the whole point. I mean, I've thought of that. If they were hiding away, if you want to say, mm-hmm. inside places like Newgrange, and I'm not saying only Newgrange. There was one in, there's one in France. There's all, one in Scotland. There's one in France. There's like Most these. Of them, yeah, yeah there's, they're, they're all over. Um, sacred sites sacred sites yeah and they would have been used for the people but then again if people were kind of hiding out as you're saying them, mm-hmm. how would they eat did they need to eat at the time if they were of a t- an entirely different consciousness maybe they didn't need to eat um, but that's a good question if they were hiding out are, is there an underground network of tunnels and things underneath mm-hmm. those sites oh, I'd say so yeah. I'd say so so I'd say like that the entrance into Newgrange is just an entrance into a further underground hall structure like at Giza you know? Yeah. So basically, the people went underground, is what we're saying. Uh-huh. And when they came out, oh, and can I make a point with with all the all the uh, DNA yeah. to restart civilization? Mm-hmm. Don't these were master geneticists? Yes. Yeah. They had, they had understood. They had the keys to the spectrum of energy mm-hmm. that creates the third dimension. Yes. Wow. These were master geniuses, you know. Mm-hmm. So when this so-called nuclear winter, mm-hmm. you know, in other words, the sun was blocked out and everything. And the movement of all the, all the plates, the, the, the tectonic plates all over the earth, had changed the centre of the earth's landmass. It was no longer in... It was had been Ireland and Tara. That mm-hmm. was the centre of the earth, the landmass, before the cataclysm, before the comet came in and yeah. tilted the earth's axis and everything. Mm-hmm. And so after that happened, the consciousness of the people was changed because it was, so it was connected to the, the, to the light, to the energy of the earth, mm-hmm. and the cataclysm totally changed that. So when the people come out, those that um, managed to kind of, say, be in the arcs, if you like, managed to keep their consciousness and their, and obviously they were survivors as well. Mm-hmm. So when they came out, they still had full knowledge and realized they had to go and establish a new center of the earth. They had to find where the new center of the earth was mm-hmm. because they were stabilizing the tectonic plates of the earth. So they migrated out of what was known as Atlantis, mm-hmm. Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, all of that, into Egypt, all over the world. They went all over the world, mm-hmm. but they went into Egypt. And in more modern times in Egypt, they were known as the Atlantean tribes, and they met with um, Tutmos III, mm-hmm. who was the great-great-grandfather of Akhenaten, and who started in more modern times the mystery schools. Yeah. When I say modern times now, it's modern, ancient modern Egypt. <laughs> so, so fast forward then to the exodus out of Egypt of what's called the Israelites. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the Israelites are ex- exit out of, uh, exodus out of Egypt um, and, you know, apparently wandered for 40 years and all of that in the desert. Mm. Uh, that was the Irish. That was the Atlantean tribes leaving Egypt and mm-hmm. coming back into Ireland. So we pick up the story where we, we see, for example, Merit Aten, mm. the daughter of Achnaten, and as she's known as Skota. Mm. And her husband, Gaithalos, or Gadel Glass, as he's known. Um, now, there's a connection between Gadel Glass, Gaithalos, and Moses in the Bible, and the mm-hmm. serpents, because Moses cures Gaithalos of a, of a serpent wound, which that's just right. turns his arm green, and that's why he's called um, Gadel Glass, because glass in, in Gaelic is green. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, that's a whole other thing. But, so, Scota Meritaten. The Israelite tribes that were in Egypt were made up of when it comes say we come to the time of Akhenaten Akhenaten and, and Nefertiti mm-hmm. and Akhenaten's father and back to even Tutmos III yeah 
They were of the lineage of those people, the Atlanteans, who left ancient Ireland, when or ancient Atlantis, when the comet struck. Mm. And they went into Egypt. So the people that came back into Ireland, they went into Egypt and all the structures that are built there, the pyramids, everything else. Mm-hmm. So then when they came back into Ireland, going back, say, 600 BC, with the arrival of Gadael Glass, Skatelos and Skota mm-hmm. into Ireland and her sons, when you go back to that time, um, they came back and found Newgrange. But they found the place that their ancestors had constructed. Okay. But it was obviously overgrown in bits, like over all that period yeah. of time. Yeah. So they reconstructed it. They took it, you know, re gave it new life, if you like. Yeah. yeah. You know, the returning people like yeah. Scota, Gadel Glass, those people. Yeah. They oh, exactly. <laughs> recon- reconstructed it almost, yeah. yeah, into the configuration as we would see today. Now, the thing about Newgrange is Newgrange is an amazing structure because it it, um, it is literally the cave of the sun. So it yes. it, ta- it the light of the sun shines through the light box in Newgrange. And it does so um, on two or three days either side of the winter solstice. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing about that is it, you would have to be very familiar with the cycle of procession, which is a cycle that takes 25,920 years. And you would have to know the skies and this cycle very well in order to be able to build a structure that can um, harness the light of the sun yeah. and still work to this present day. Because what happens is it goes out of alignment over a period of time. But the people who built Newgrange were so knowledgeable that they actually took that into account yeah, and built it in such a way that it never goes out of alignment. Mm. It never had to be rebuilt or realigned. It's imperfect. The oh, light box yeah. is still in in um, a situation where the, but even beyond the light of the sun mm-hmm. Venus does a thing called the Venus crossing and has always been known as the morning and the evening star oh okay but what many people don't know about Newgrange is that the light of Venus actually goes in once every eight years wow or once on uh, once every when the Venus when, it, when there's a Venus crossing yeah. it takes 150 years and then it does it again in eight years so um, before the sun rises, Venus will arri- will rise on on the morning of the solstice, and the light of Venus shines in through the light box into Newgrange and illuminates it just before the sun shines in. But the light of Venus, when it goes in, is a kind of a blue color. So by the time the light of Venus is moving away, then the rising sun comes in. Mm-hmm. But the thing about the Venus crossing is. It happens once in 150 years and then once again in eight years. And in the sky, it makes, it inscribes, um, a pen, is it a pentagram in the sky? The, pattern, the pattern of its... Yeah, I think it's a pentagram in the sky. It inscri- Yeah, I think it's a pentagram it inscribes in the sky. And on the roof, bo- on the, on the roof box over Newgrange mm-hmm. is eight pentagrams drawn to show the eight years that it takes. To go the, like the... It's called a Venus crossing. It's when it's closest to the earth. Okay. So not only does the sun shine in through the light but the planetary of yeah. the, the light box in Newgrange, but yeah. also the light of Venus. There you go. Which is like, Whoa. I mean, that's like, you know. Talk about master coding. I mean, how could you build a structure to actually take, it's just impossible almost to do, you know what I mean? And show us that they had master knowledge of, mm-hmm. of all those things. But even beyond that. Um, well, it's to me. It shows that they travel to the stars as well as on Earth. Right? Well, yeah. A lot I mean, of the views that you're talking about are aerial from above. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, so much of their... <clears throat> um, so much of their knowledge, I suppose, that's constructed, you know, in these ancient sites. That's how you can make the connection and yeah. see how they follow the, the mirror, mirroring the stars mm-hmm. and the sky and their sacred rivers, yeah. like denial um but just quickly so because we're i think we're going to finish up fairly soon so one of the things um about newgrange itself is what it does is it actually recreates the whole conception cycle if you like and so as the sun shines down the axis way in through the light box and the axis way of um um of the kind of uh entrance way into newgrange Mm -hmm. as the sun shines down on the um solstice and 
it shines down like a laser beam. Mm. I mean, you've been inside Newground and you've seen how. Yeah. Um, oh, they re- well, yeah, I know you haven't re-enacted. you haven't seen the actual sun, but you've seen the reenactment where they shine the light down. So if the sun was to shine down, it's because of um, I forget the terminology, but it's about bending light anyway. And the people who built Newgrange were able uh, no bending it. Brilliant. And the people who built Newgrange were actually able to bend the light Ooh. in using the stones, Ooh. so that it bent around and in. So it shone in in and and hit inside like a laser beam, like a pointer. Ooh. Yeah. You know, the ray of the yeah, sun yeah. as it shone in, yeah. like a pointer. So, um, inside Newgrange, there's three, um, as you go into the mound itself, there's three... Um, Niches. Recesses, yes. you know. Yeah, that's it, one to your left as you enter, one to your left, Basins. one to your right, and one facing you, yeah. Okay. And there's three granite basins in there, yeah. So, those basins, the one on the right alcove and the one in the... Or recess and the one on the left alcove would have been taken out and the one in the middle would have been taken out into the centre. Okay. Now... Um, the sun shines in and it moves from left to right as it goes in, as it shines down into to Newgrange and into the passage, it moves from left to right. Um, so as it, as it shines and hits the left first, what it illuminates is um, an image of, not clearly seen, but if, you, if somebody points it out to you, you can see it's there, is the image of the baby uh, faces, baby's face on the stone. Oh. So then it comes and hits the first stone that has been taken out of that mm-hmm. um, alcove. And that's showing the son of God coming onto earth. It's reenacting conception. The mm-hmm. conception of Horus, the yeah. son of God, the son. Yeah. Okay. So it hits that first stone. Then it moves to the second one, hits the second stone, which has, which has come from the right alcove. Yeah. Yeah. And that second stone just has two kind of indents in the granite bowl. Yeah. Those two indents represent the two nuclei of the newly forming um, fertilized all of them mm-hmm. and the third basin <clears throat> is in six pieces and that's known as the six staged embryo oh yeah now there is a thing that 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 bowl was broken in more modern times by treasure hunters that's what we're told but i mean you know anyway the bowl is in six pieces and it represents the six stage embryo so newgrange actually um was a highly advanced form of genetics and recording genetics. Mm. Yeah. So it it was. So it's definitely the Ark. Yeah. Yeah, it Deep was bank. built by highly advanced people, mm. and built for um, because this comet was going to hit the Earth because they knew it was going to hit the Earth, and it was built to literally preserve humanity. Newgrange, not just in the sense of being a seed bank. And taking all the DNA, you know, saving all, preserving all the DNA, but preserving the knowledge as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is the theory put forth by, um, and it's not just him, actually, Vivalusky, uh, Worlds in Collision. Right. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of people who, and there's a lot of evidence. The Younger Dryas period is a period of time that started around 10,500 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, the melting of the last ice age. There's, there's a lot of evidence to show that the Earth was actually... Mm. Um, hit by something that caused all this. Yeah, that's yeah. Graham Hancock's assumption. Yeah, it? yeah, he talks about quite a lot of that as well. So um, well, that would be like the dinosaurs, <laughs> no? Hmm? Like the the, the dinosaurs the, would have been earlier, comet. but there yeah, is yeah. yeah. I mean, there's the idea that okay, the year goes comet, through a cycle yeah. of things like that happening. So, um, yeah. So the idea is that we lost our consciousness at the time. We lost our ability to have this bicameral mind and to be able to communicate with yeah. the God part of ourselves. Yeah. And so what happened was, because the general masses of people lost the ability to communicate with the God part of themselves, uh, other people stepped in and said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll act as the God part of you, no. you know. Just let and so here and tell you exactly what to do to create the reality. Yeah, I so like politics it. and religion and all sorts of things were born. Banking. <laughs> and banking and... Anyway, I think we're going to finish the podcast up yep. there uh, because this does go into a lot more. Maybe we could do a second part to this you might. podcast. I think, we, I think we should, but just to mention that uh, the Flavite Mystery School is on a journey. Yes, that's Antoinette right. With coming um, up. March 9th, uh, we will be going. Antoinette's going out sooner. Yeah. And um, it starts the 11th, right? The 11th of March. Yeah, it begins the... Yeah. So the journey... Well, the, the journey effectively is from the 10th to the 21st of March. But um, I also have a journey in Ireland in June for the solstice. That's it. And I have another journey in Egypt, uh, another mystery school journey in Egypt, the same as the one that will start in a few days, 
in September for the equinox and then another one in December for the solstice. And the information about that is on the website, but you can always contact me on info at flowerofflight.com. And I would just say, if you're interested at all in this kind of burgeoning field of um, exploring the Irish sacred sites, which predate the Egyptian ones, really, mm-hmm. um, the, the June solstice tour is the one to go on because you'll, you'll be going to Newgrange and Nath and Douth. You'll be able to see yourself these epic um, pieces of history sitting there in their splendid, undecipherable, uh, what would I say, like uh, technology mm-hmm. th- that's so advanced that we still don't even know. Yeah. Like yeah. our minds aren't, no. our bicameral minds are still unbalanced. So very we well said, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, thanks, Christine. That was very well oh. said. And um, just in line with what Christine is saying that the journey, the solstice journey in Ireland is, you know, specifically to connect, you know, so that we can bring back the information of how the Irish people and the Egyptian people are not just connected to the same people. Yeah. We're the same people. We are the Atlantean tribes. We are the mystery school initiates. We are the one with the knowledge and we are the light weavers. We are the ones that are, here to remind everybody else to wake everybody else up yeah exactly. everybody has this knowledge yeah. it's just that whether you know it or not some people can have retained more let's say maybe or remember more or have got to the phase of remembering more quicker than others but everybody is going in the same way and everybody will remember yeah. mm-hmm. the so, energy's rising it's the age of aquarius people will it's like the hundredth monkey mm-hmm. there will be just exactly. a certain amount of people that will know it and then everyone will exactly know. so um so those Atlanteans that went out around the world from Atlantis, Ireland, were doing so to preserve all this ancient information and we are their descendants. So the Irish journey um, and everything I do really is about bringing back that knowledge and bringing it back, you know, to the world. But, you know, particularly like to Irish people, to English people, to Scottish people, to Welsh people, the amount of damage that have, has been done mm. to... Um, as the aforementioned people, Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales. Um, and I say that because I'm Irish myself. I'm not suggesting that it's, we're the only people in the world it's ever happened to. But the Irish people, the English people, the Scottish people, the Welsh people, we know we're all, we're, we're the same people. We're all one people. We have been infiltrated, you know. They've divided. come in and infiltrated us. They've divided Northern Ireland from Southern Ireland, England from Ireland, Scotland from England, Wales from Scotland and England and everything has just been divided we're one people and out, outliers <laughs> outsiders mm-hmm. came in and divided us up and that's where it all not where it all starts but um, where a huge part of it kicked off is at the so-called Battle of the Boyne um, yeah, which has affected not just Ireland England and but in fact, the whole of Europe because of the laws, the banking laws. I, it's too much to get into right now. It's really Actually, diabolical. Can I, it's so late. Can I just ask one more question? Yeah. So the Battle of the Boyne, wh- like, would you say, like, them reenacting that ritual, was that, like, a good thing? Or yeah. Was that... It was meant to be. It, it was, was meant totally to be yeah. healing. Yeah. 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 Um, so, for example, this, the House of Stuart yeah. and the House of Orange, they both went back to um, the original people, that the Atlanteans that would yeah. have left um, Ireland and um, you know, Atlantis, Ireland, yeah. and went into Egypt. And they would have been those original people who are carrying the original so knowledge and information. But mm-hmm. as time went by in ancient Egypt, mm-hmm. the knowledge and information became corrupt. And I would say even some of the original Atlantean tribes that went in became corrupt themselves. Yes, yeah. exactly. You know, yeah. and, and possibly it was an element of them that formed the Amun priesthood, mm-hmm. you know, because when consciousness fell, you know, even very good people became corrupt. Of course, yeah. Well, it was um, a fight for survival. Yeah. And so, um, so when those people returned then back to Ireland, because, because our memory is so under the surface, you know, it's, it's actually quite close, you know, to yeah. Irish people, Scottish people, English people. We're still very connected. Yes. Of course, yeah. You know, I think so. like and Native Americans, like Aboriginals. Yes. You know, they're still very connected to the well, land and I, to their ancient culture. And that's why they've tried to, to destroy and decimate all these ancient well, I would say civilizations. Well, here as an Irish American sorry, but living native. in Ireland, I would just say it's a shamanic, created, creative, a feminine culture 
and it was diabolically Ireland, yeah. yeah Ireland and it was diabolically uh, the same thing that done to the Native Americans have been done to the Irish people oh absolutely people yeah because it's the same in, people they have to empower themselves yeah. Native Americans and Irish are the same that's exactly we're it. the same people yeah well the point is everyone needs we're to Atlanteans. raise their consciousness and empower so, yourself to disconnect from this false matrix mm-hmm. that has been conditioned around us they're mm-hmm. stealing our power they're taking our creative energy because we're immortal creative light here creating the reality and literally they're they're brainwashing us to create their reality mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. the reality of our soul and our heart yeah they took the place of the god yes. part of us yes you know uh, yeah, in the with religion with politics yeah. with everything else yeah. where we actually took that information from ourselves you know yeah. from our higher selves and um, but that's a very good question was the, the original ritual at the battle of the boyne was good. it intention good or negative no it was a good intention mm-hmm. and these were people who were returning atlanteans yeah. you know and they were trying to encode the land with this knowledge but like everything else it was hijacked and then demonized that's mm-hmm. what these powers that be do they first of all pretend to be the people yeah and then well, they because they infiltrate them mm-hmm. pretend to be them and then what do they do they demonize it mm-hmm. so in other words, if they pretend to be that person and, and these people have a reputation for being very noble and honest people. Mm. So you get a group of people who says, right, we're going to infiltrate them. They infiltrate them and they pretend to be them for a while. And then the infiltrators start becoming liars and very violent mm-hmm. and everything Politics else. And so over time, what happens is that this group of people who had the reputation of being very honest and nonviolent over a period of time start getting the reputation of being aggressive and very dishonest people Mm. and it's not because the people have changed it's because they were infiltrated yeah and that's what happened that's what's happened to the atlanteans Mm. they're still there but they've been infiltrated the masses of people on the earth are the true inheritors of this planet we all are we all are every person on this earth including the powers that be Mm. you know even though you know but look they're they're people who've gone into their ego and they're and they want power and control in truth, the only power and control you can have is over yourself. That's right. That's what a true alchemist is, a true shaman. And that's a good point because the cultures of ancient Egypt and ancient Atlantis, Ireland, England, Scotland, Wales, we were shaman, shamanic. That's it, it was a shamanic you know, culture. Which would lead me into the whole uh, idea of why, another aspect of why all this knowledge was shut down. Yeah. Because w- we had the knowledge of how the earth provides everything mm-hmm. for healing. You know, and we knew how to communicate with the nature who are the who are nature, yeah. and we did so by by nature by by consuming things in nature. Yeah. Anyway, that's something that's for another a, podcast. a whole we will, different podcast. We will mm-hmm. go over that in the future. So okay, we're going to end there. Yeah. But um, thanks very much for um, joining me today, Charlotte. Thank you very much. Thank you very Our much. Um, our sound editor and our techie. Mm-hmm. Yes, we had some difficulties, but we're, we fixed it. <laughs> yeah. our, our, we were scattered energies today. Um, and so thank you, Christine. You're welcome. Christine doodles artwork here all the time when we're, yeah. when we're um, doing the podcasts. Yes. Um, beautiful artwork, I must say. Mm-hmm. Um, see new so thank you for that, serpent. Christine. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, Newgrange and, and the Serpent. i scarab, which just for you not to know, is the representation by the Egyptians of the bicameral Maybe we line. should take, them pic- take Christine's <laughs> pictures and put them up with each podcast. I will. Yes. I think you sure. did that once with one. I did, yes. yes. Although I think my drama might have been the same. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Antoinette drew a lovely diagram. I drew, I drew diagrams oh, as well. Not as good as Christine's though. Oh. Um, nowhere near as good as Christine's. Anyway, it's so. It's a learning curve. It's, it's a learning, learning curve. curve. So anyway, thank you very much everybody for listening today. If you are listening, if you're not, thank you anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we'll be um, back in touch and this it. will be after our Equinox journey into yeah. the Great Pyramid. Yes, yeah. so stick around for all oh, the actually, exciting we're, we, information. We will be putting up, uh, thanks Charlotte, we will be putting up, um, thanks snippets. to Christine and Charlotte, mm-hmm. we'll be putting up um, snippets of our journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll mm-hmm. probably put them up on uh, Facebook and um Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Yeah, once we have um, Wi-Fi, yes, we're, we, we're in good business. I think, yeah. Adrian, I believe you had the highlights video up in your newsletter. Of, That's that right, yeah. F- of one, one of the last journeys. Yeah, that was 2017, 2017. wasn't it? Good good Magical. point, Charlotte, yeah. I was there by myself. And Charlotte so you coming this time. Mm. I know. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to say goodbye. One and more time. <laughs> Again. One more time. Okay, bye. 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 Thank you very, very much.